my name is Angie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. This is a channel where I like to make book videos as well as homeschool videos, mostly book related. So today's video is a book recommendation video. So as many of you know, I have my PhD in immunology and microbiology and I have always been interested in infectious disease. And I have a number of books that I have read in the past probably 20 years, fiction, nonfiction that I have been wanting to recommend on this channel. And I think what inspired this video was probably all the news about coronavirus. And by no means do I want to make light of the situation or make light of people who have been infected or families that are affected by it. But I also want to share some of my favorite books about infectious agents. And so I've tried to pick books that cover different agents. And so let's get started. All right, so the first book I want to share is The Hot Zone. This was one of my favorites. It came out in the late 90s. It's by Richard Preston, and you'll see I have a number of different recommendations that come from him, both his fiction and nonfiction. This one happens to be a nonfiction book about an Ebola outbreak that happened on the East Coast in the United States. And they actually just made a, oh, it wasn't just last year, 2019, Nat Geo made a, a drama series on the hot zone and they did a really good job they followed the book really closely and the story starts out in africa because that is where ebola is naturally endemic or that means that it naturally lives there in certain species but at times it can pass into hosts that aren't endemic like humans and make them very 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 sick the beginning starts with a monkey that has been secured and transferred to the u.s for research reasons um, and it's sent to a monkey house in virginia an army doctor who used to work up at Husamrid, or the, the army base is for the level four, and level four being the, the most dangerous infectious agents. She used to work there on Ebola, and then she was transferred someplace safer into like DC, like somewhere in the suburbs of DC to do research. They were sent samples from this monkey house, and they turn out to be Ebola. And it just, the book really characterizes or chronicalizes what happens from there once they're like, oh my gosh, we have Ebola, and we have Ebola in the U.S., and we should not have Ebola in the U.S., and our, how many monkeys are sick in this house, and, and different things like that, and it kind of plays it out, and I highly recommend the book. I highly recommend the, the miniseries as well on, on Nat Geo. It is very entertaining. So that's number one, and then the second book I want to talk about is also a Richard Preston book. It is called The Demon in the Freezer. It is also a nonfiction book. It kind of came out of the anthrax scare, and so the story that this book is telling is of the government's response to bioterrorism or the potential for bioterrorist threat. I read this book like, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, and I still remember this fact. This was one of those things that I was like, oh my gosh, is the fact that smallpox has been eradicated from the planet. We have a good vaccine, but it didn't get destroyed. Like there's two deep freezers, highly secure freezers, in the world, one is the CDC in Atlanta and the other is Russia that have a stock of smallpox that can be thawed and grown back up. Um, and so it's not dead, it's eradicated, but not dead. And I remember reading that and being like, oh, I thought it was like gone, gone, but it's not. And this virologist has been tasked with kind of waking it back up, taking it out of the freezer and starting to work with live smallpox again with the idea of how to combat a bioterrorist threat because there had been like this Russian defector who had basically come to the US telling them that, that those stocks have been moved around or have been sent places they shouldn't be. There's, they're not just as agreed upon in that one freezer in Russia like they are in the CDC, or at least I hope they are. So this book is really good, I highly recommend it. It is definitely a page turner. The third book I want to recommend is The Great Influenza, the story of the deadliest pandemic in history. So this book talks about the 1919 Spanish flu. I have only started this book and it was a long time ago and then I lost my copy. So I haven't finished this book. So it's a recommendation without having read it. I've heard mixed things about it. I've heard that it is very interesting and it tells the story especially about the virus and how the virus works in a very scientific way. Hopefully not too scientific for most people, but I have read some good reviews. I've also read some reviews that say that it could have been condensed and more virus information, less politics, less background medical information, but that's not the, what the author did. But he does chronicalize the 1919 flu, how it started in Kansas, and then 
because of the World War I, it ended up kind of spreading more worldwide and just because of the nature of influenza. Influenza is a really tricky virus. It's, it's an RNA virus, it's segmented, it has all of these different tools that helps it rearrange, rearrange between swine and avian and humans and it's just got all these, this potential for mutation and potential for increased virulence that makes influenza I think one of the scarier viruses. I mean, it's not Ebola, but it has a, a lot of power for, for infection and mortality. And so I've been wanting to pick this book back up. That's the third one. The fourth one I want to talk about is called The Plague by Albert Camus. And this is actually fiction. The last three have been nonfiction. This one's fiction, and it's more of a classic. And so it is one that I have not read again. I have a copy of should show you that. I have a copy of it only because my husband had to read this in high school. He went to a much tougher high school than I went to. They had to read this. It is about the bubonic plague and the bubonic plague is actually caused by a bacteria, Yersinia pestis. And the last three I have mentioned, Ebola, smallpox, influenza have all been viruses. This is the only bacteria. And it talks about in a coastal city of Africa, as the plague comes to its borders, it chronicalizes the symptoms and talks about that as this, as this bug basically rampaged through this city and it caused the city to go on different quarantines and isolations and things like that. But what this book has a little bit more going for it and maybe why it's a classic is it talks more kind of about death, about the understanding of, of evil and good and the expectation of the good life, as well as some scholars have even said that the plague is like Nazi Germany occupying France. The is like the plague occupying this coastal town in Africa. So to have kind of that symbolism and allegory on top of the explanation of how the disease works is really interesting. So I'm looking forward to picking this up. And since I have a copy, I might as well. All right, I picked out a couple other fictional books. So these are more really just fun books that are not necessarily about true diseases or diseases we know. The last four are diseases we know. We know what causes them. I have a uh, Richard Preston. This is one of his nonfiction books. So it's called The Cobra Event. I read this in college and I still remember it. It was just kind of one of those mind-blowing ideas of like, oh my gosh, can it really get that bad? It's a story of bioterrorism. So there is a terrorist in New York City who has the, the smarts and capability to create a bioweapon. And then the FBI getting this big microbiology forensic team together to head up the investigation of like, how's it getting out? How's it transmitted? It's moving fast. How can we help? What do we need to do? Sort of panicky situations. And it is really gripping and scary, especially if you like this stuff, which, which I do. I do also like police procedural kind of books. So the FBI and all that stuff is, is a topic I like. I like those kinds of themes in books, but it's really good. It's, it's a little scary. The other nonfiction I have is a Michael Crichton book. So the Andromeda strain, this is one I've read this and I was looking at, um, some of the descriptions and I'm just blanking a little bit on it. So Clearly, I need to reread it. I do remember liking it. I do remember being like, that's an interesting idea. It's about a time set in the future with more space travel. And in this case, it talks about a world where any shuttles or probes or things that get sent out into space have to be thoroughly decontaminated. And in this case, something got sent out to collect uh, microbes or dust or things like that. And then it, for some reason, came back to Earth without any decontamination, something happened maybe the crew is all dead. I can't quite remember, but it lands, it crash lands, and then it results in like this mass killing around the crashed um, shuttle. And people are trying to figure out what it is, what's causing it, what, what brought back. Is there an infectious agent from space? And how does that work? Can we combat it? Do, does antibiotics even work on it? I, I have vague memories, but I can't quite remember, but I do remember liking it. So I do recommend that one. And then I wanna round this video up with just a couple honorable mentions that I have not read but are on my TBR. And so I thought I might as well share them. And the first is called, And the Band Plays On. There's a subtitle, I think it's like politics and the AIDS epidemic. Uh, 
So it's about, it's a nonfiction book about the AIDS epidemic. Um, I think it's in the US. I don't think it's African in nature, but I'm not sure. Anyway, I've heard really good things about it. So I've, it's been on my TBR for a while. I just need to pick it up. And then the second one I have heard good things about is actually a YA book. It's about yellow fever. It's called Fever 1793. Let me look. I remembered it. It's called Fever 1793, and it's about yellow fever in Philadelphia. And there was an outbreak there, and just it's a mosquito-borne virus. That's, so that means it's transmitted via mosquitoes, and that was a high mosquito summer, and people were coming down with yellow fever. And I've heard really good things. I've also heard it's good in, in the realm of YA, so it's not too graphic, but it's still very entertaining. So that's an honorable mention too. And I think what I really like about these books is I know a lot of this stuff. I could rattle off facts about different infectious agents, but to put like a story and people on them, even if it's fiction, or if it's nonfiction, I think it adds a lot more knowledge. I think I retain a lot more from that. So yes, this is definitely one of my favorite genres of book. Infectious disease, nonfiction, fiction. And as a disclaimer, I realize I probably should say this. Of the ones I've read, it's hard for me to know if they would be good for someone who knows nothing about these areas of study because like as I read I'm like oh yeah yeah I understand that I understand that I'll just skim the science stuff just to an extent or I'll read it and be like that's a really interesting way of describing it and I really have no idea if like the way it's done is approachable to someone who doesn't know much about the the scientific background I hope it is and I think some of these books especially since they are more popular do a good job of bringing it to both audiences. The audience of scientists and people who are kind of in the field as well as people who are not. And if you're interested in this topic, I hope those recommendations are helpful. And please, if you've heard of any that you've read and you really like, I would love to hear about them in the comments. These, again, this is one of my favorite genres. So, okay, thank you, take care. Please consider subscribing and liking and all that stuff. So, have a wonderful day. Okay, take care.